Hi guys, in this video I'll show you how to remove limiters from your SeaDo 300 watercraft using the HP Tuners tuning platform. I'm assuming you have the HPT beta software installed. You need a beta because it's the version that has all the SeaDo specific options. The beta version gets updated almost daily, so it's a good idea to check for updates frequently. I'm also assuming you've read your vehicle to fetch the stock tune file for your specific machine. The first set of limiters we'll be removing are located under the Speedo tab, so let's click that. Depending on your SIDO model and year, you may see slightly different options than what you see on my screen. You may have fewer or more of the variant settings, but only one actually controls your machine. You could figure out which of these variants applies to your specific SIDU by trial and error, but the simplest thing to do is just apply the same setting to all variants of the same type or group. As you can see on my screen, there are eight GPS speed limit variants. Only one applies to your machine. Since this is a North American SIDU and we have a 67 mile per hour speed limit imposed by the Coast Guard, I'm pretty sure Variant 4 is the limiter that applies to this SIDU, but I don't want to waste any time, so I'll apply the same setting value to all speed limit variants, just to be sure. Some newer models also require this GPS adder field to be modified. We'll set it to 90 miles per hour as well. Next, we'll tweak the maximum torque variants. There's four of them for this machine. We'll make all four the same. We'll set the last four rows to 100% available torque. Highlight the last four rows, type 100 and hit enter. Now, repeat this step in all the other maximum torque variants. We are now done with the speedo section. Next, we'll go into the engine section. Once the engine section opens up, go to the Torque Management tab. Here, we want to change the torque limit variance. Both will be set to 100%. Next, this one is a little strange, is the battery voltage limiter, which I ran into on my personal ski. Let's open up the voltage variant and make the adjustments. We'll change the 7900 and 8500 RPM rows to 100%, which gets automatically adjusted to 99, which is fine. That's it, if you have any more variants, voltage variance that is, make the same change. Next are adjustments to the engine spark, which controls the ignition timing. Let's open that up. This screen may look a little intimidating with all the different settings. No worries, we only care about a couple. For limiter removals, we're only focusing on the base and the high altitude settings. A lot of people miss this since it's not very obvious that it's a limiter unless you've done tuning in the past and understand ignition timing. Again, we have a bunch of variants here. We will make the same change to all variants of both base and high altitude groups just to be sure the change will apply to our machine, since we can't really tell which one applies to us just by looking at the screen. Let's open up variant zero from the base group. For the purposes of simply removing limiters, we only care about the few bottom cells under the 8300 RPM column. Those last few cells come into effect at wide open throttle 
at max engine load. If you were to leave them as they are at 24 degrees, the engine would simply not make the power to go much above the stock RPM. As you can see, there's a very large drop in ignition timing after 8000 RPM. A safe value for stock boost and 91 octane, that is North American 91 octane gas, is around 31 degrees. Since the system won't let us actually enter 31 exactly, we end up with 30.75, which is fine. If you data lock your ski, you can slowly increase this number and monitor knock. If you run higher octane gas like 94, you can bump this number by a couple degrees, but I would strongly suggest data logging to make sure there's no knock. Okay, now you can perform the same change to the other base variants as well as the high altitude ones. We'll use the same 31 degree setting value for both. Lastly, we need to actually increase the RPM limiter. To do this, open up the fuel section and then the cutoff tab. The RPM limiter is located under the transient cutoff. We'll set all variants to 8400 RPM. That's it. We're done. You can now save this tune file, write it to your CDU, and send it. I hope you found this video tutorial helpful. If you have any questions, you can email us at ajs at activejetsport.com. Don't forget to visit our website at activejetsport.com for all kinds of performance parts, from supercharger kits, camshafts, fuel injectors, basically everything you need to put down some serious power at a great price.